another part of bike ergonomics and adjustments. Adjusting the bars that I talked about helped helped me on track to extend my stints, which are still very short. But I'm thinking that I maybe need bars that are sloped or whatever it's called. Anyway, more downwards to ease with my wrists. The better angle helped with my throttle control a lot in lower gears. Now that I'm actually hanging off the bike in corners and shifting gears during a lap, one thing I noticed that it was really hard to upshift when leaned over to the right. So, very easy adjustment here. Quick to do. Helped in that. At one point I thought about moving the pegs a bit rearwards and upwards, but my Heels are already pretty close to the passenger foot pegs and I need these more often than not, so not moving them. Those are the pressures the manufacturer recommends. I run 2.3 and 2.5 at the rear and the rubber wears nicely, I think. One time I ran with the higher pressures on track and it developed, I believe, were cold tears. Big tears that you could get your fingernail under. Now, seems okay. I moved the rear spring adjustment to 5 from 3, so two clicks to the stiffer direction. It's got 10 positions in all. It feels a bit more solid now. I can't describe it any fancier than that. The bike has Dunlop Sportmax D 214s. I've seen videos and read about these tires that some people have gotten only 5,000 miles out of them, but mine seem pretty much alive still, I guess. I got something like uh, close to 7,000 kilometers on it. I've been practicing some clutchless shifting down and up. Seems really easy. But one thing I can do is uh, shift clutchless uh, between 1, 2 and 3 because the lower gears have a greater speed differential between them than the higher gears, which is a shame because 1, 2 and 3 is what I use on track. The noise limit is 95 decibels on my local track and it puts out 92 or 93 when they measure it each time so no aftermarket can is going in there. <laughs> 